Welcome everybody to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and this is BP NFL. With me as always to look ahead on Mondays to the next week in the wagering space in the NFL is Andrew Erickson, the Undertaker himself. We're here on the BP channel. Make sure you subscribe to the Betting Pros channel and of course to the podcast wherever you get your pods. Drop your comments below, ring the bell. You know how it goes around these parts. Week seven, we still got two Monday night games left. Make sure you follow us on social media for my picks in those games. Monday night football has been pretty hot over here in these parts. Another weird, wacky week seven that's just about in the books. Uh, the Miami Dolphins could not figure out the Colts defense. And apparently, uh, Devontae Adams doesn't cure all the ills of the Jets. Andrew, who would have known? Who could have thought? Not me, as someone that was very invested in the Devontae Adams anytime touchdown, which did not come through. <laughs> but uh, luckily, Brees Hall, the Brees Hall bags still feel okay in fantasy. So I was happy yeah. about that. Him running a little running wild. So I was happy about that. But that was about the uh, best thing from uh, Sunday Night Football for me. Yes, I did a stepladder bet of Devon A. Chain where it was uh, I bet him from 40 all the way up to 100. Really heavy from 40 to 70, though. Got all of those. Didn't get the cherries on top of the Sunday, but at least Devon A. Chan did get over those ridiculously low numbers they were set. Tyreek Hill did not. Uh, Tony Pollard did not. Some disappointing things, but the Chiefs parlay of the week came through. The bonus came through. Patrick Mahomes is the underdog. Lock it up every single time, Andrew. Money line, points, and the under by the skin of our teeth. Just got it. As I was uh, as I was licking my wounds from my two underdogs going up 10 nothing to open the games between the Patriots and Titans just to get absolutely demolished right after they uh, opened up. Well, I was with you on the Dolphins one too, man. That was just the the No, I was cool. talking Patriots up 10 nothing. Oh, Titans the Patriots one too. Titans also up 10 nothing. Oh, and I didn't even realize the Dolphins were up 10 nothing too. Wow. Uh yeah, our dogs did not come yeah. through. The dogs yeah. did not come I, through. And and Demario Douglas apparently was ill. That would have been nice information to have. Well, he, but, he got, apparently, that, got that false start and then he was never heard from again. And then he was sick. Yeah, false start on the way to the bathroom, I think is where he went. All right, before we get to the look ahead for this week, don't forget we're giving away a signed Michael Strahan jersey right here on the channel. So how do you win this thing? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you go to bettingpros.com slash contest and you complete the form. You download the Betting Pros app, leave a review of the Betting Pros podcast or subscribe to our social media channels at Betting Pros on X, on TikTok, and at Betting Pros NFL on Instagram. The more actions you complete, the more entries you'll receive, and you might just receive the Michael Strahan jersey from our good friends at pristineauction.com. Great place to get all of your jerseys, autographed helmets, you name it, they've got it over there. And remember, we'll be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so subscribe to the channel, ring the bell till it goes ding, so you can claim your prize. All right, let's look ahead to week eight in the NFL, and start here with Minnesota Vikings going to the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are two and four, and they deserve it. Uh, maybe they deserve even worse. I don't know. The Minnesota Vikings finally got dealt their first loss to the Detroit Lions. Close one, though. The Minnesota Vikings are three-point favorites in this one, uh, as they uh, probably should be. Maybe even more. I don't know. We could talk about that. 46.5 is the number, plus 135 on the money line for the Rams. So, Andrew, um, I'm just going to shake the dust off. Um, they had the London. They had the bye. They you know, had some moments there in that game. Fell short. I'm going right with the Vikings in the three here. I'm not worrying about the over line at all at 46 and a half. Although I, I, again, I think it's dangerous because the health of the Rams offense has been so poor all year. Kyron Williams, God bless him. Keeping that thing alive. I'm going right to Minnesota in the three right now. Cause I think this one grows to three and a half or maybe even four by week's end. I agree. Uh, when I projected this game, it was closer to minus four and a half for me with the Vikings. So there's nothing about the Rams, especially the last couple of weeks where I mean that game against the Raiders was close. I'm looking up. Mm -hmm. Why is this game not over yet? The Raiders are still in this game, despite Minshew throwing interception after interception. So I like the Vikings here as well. Again, they're playing on the road, but we know that the Rams don't really have home field advantage. So back in the dome, I also like the over because we expect to see Cooper Cup back this week. Sean McVay said that he's going to probably play. Sure we do. Well, if he's if he's back, then it's a good bet for the over. So. It, it might be. And look, it doesn't shake me at all from the three if he's back. Like, I still think Minnesota wins this game handily uh, at the end of the day. That defense has been so good. It is the first game back. Uh, Baltimore to play tonight. We'll see how they look uh, for Monday Night Football. Make sure you follow us on social, too, for the Monday Night Football picks. Again, don't forget, we've been really good there. Cleveland, one and five, but they got a new quarterback because, well, karma finally came around to bite Deshaun Watson. And unfortunately, a bit of an injury there for him. He is out uh, maybe fortunately for the Browns. I don't know. However you want to look at that. I don't like anybody to get hurt, but Sean Watson. Eh, okay. Anyway, well, let's get to the next one here. Jameis Winston is going to take over. Uh, Cedric Tillman had a little bit of a coming out party. That's fun, but it doesn't matter because it's a 10 point spread. 
10 point underdogs at home, the Cleveland Browns. It is an in-division game, 42 and a half plus 400 for the Cleveland on the upset. Look, I, I love the Ravens. 10 is a lot of points. I am a little afraid of this 10, to be honest with you, Andrew. Uh, I can't quite get there. If anything, maybe that 42 and a half is actually, I want to go with the over. That's kind of where I think the best bet lies here. I lean towards the over too, but I'm I'm trusting the process here, Joe. Take the double digit points at, at home. It's a process, man. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. AFC North divisional matchups. Yeah, and the Ravens are playing on a short week. And is Jameis not an upgrade over Deshaun Watson at this point? And uh, now 100%. you're and now you're getting and garbage 10, time. Winston and, is always and one of the you're best getting you ten have. points at home. I know it's gross, but this is a got to trust the process. Double digit dogs at home. You got to back them, especially in divisional game quarterback upgrade. Yeah, give me the Browns plus ten. As gross as, gross as that sounds, it's, let's uh, go. It's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to hear what Terrell says about that. That seems like I'm closing my eyes special, your eyes special, his eyes special. Yikes. All right, let's talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, they uh, staved off uh, elimination from uh, the job of uh, Doug Peterson for another week. Uh, They get a W against our Patriots. Uh, Plus four and a half, though. That's the Jags at home looking at Green Bay coming in being four and a half point favorites in week eight. 48 and a half is the number. Plus 185 for the Jags on the money line. Uh, again, four and a half makes me want to go and take Jacksonville, but right now I'm kind of just going to pump the brakes on this one a little bit and kind of wait a little bit more. I just want to see, you know, Jacksonville has been in London for two weeks. I don't know if that has any weird ramifications when they come back and readjust and reducing the early value on this one. Cause this one again, feels about right to me across the board. I would agree. I think that maybe I'd look at the the total because Jordan Love does a lot of weird things where he's giving te- points to the other team very often, but he's scoring a lot of points for his team. So I think right now I want to dig a little bit deeper into this matchup. So I'm going to stay away. Yeah, this is one too. I would set the line alerts again. You can get the custom line alerts over with the free trial betting pros premium right now that you can get. Use the promo code FP free. You get 30 days free of the premium product of betting pros. Perfect time to got the World Series going, you got college football going, NFL going, NBA, NHL, everything in the month of October is happening. So use the tools here, including the line alerts, set it so you see if there's any movement here with that one, uh, because I think this one could give you some half point or more either way. I want to see how people are betting this one. Let's continue on to the next game we have here on this late after Green Bay and Jacksonville. It's the Colts and the Houston Texans. Now, these are typically entertaining games. Houston Texans are six point favorites at home with the way the Colts defense has played uh, or hasn't played this year. I imagine Houston feasts. So I kind of actually am comfortable here with the six. Uh, The Indianapolis Colts offense seems to continuously just look flat and like it can't quite put it all together. Now, Jonathan Taylor returning might move this needle for me, but I don't necessarily look for that this week. 46 and a half is the number plus 225 for the Colts. Andrew, I know, you know, the Texans as favorites sometimes bother you a little bit. Does it bother you this week against the Colts? Yep, but I'm just going to take the under. I think that this is way okay. too high. 46 and a half. What, what about the Texas okay. offense last week showed us, oh, this is a great high-powered offense. They are missing Nico Collins. He's a very important piece to this offense hitting that next year. And, I mean, we've seen this offense for multiple games with Andy Richardson. It just... They can't sustain drives unless they hit on that moon ball shot to Alec Pierce. They're not scoring as many points. So I think the under here, especially with, I can tell you exactly what the Texans are going to do in this matchup. They're going to get the ball. Joe mix in 30 times. That's a, that's what they're going to do. And yes, I think that can help sustain drives, but that doesn't scream. Hey, we're going to put up a 40 burger on the Colts. It screams, Hey, we're going to grind it out, control clock. And we're going to limit Anthony Richardson in these big plays. So I like the under. I got to say too. I mean, Andrew, Without Nico Collins, that explosiveness in this offense, you know, that you were so used to seeing, it's it's kind of disappeared a, a bit, you know? I mean, for everybody who thought, oh, it's more Tank Dell, he's explosive. This guy, I'm like, no, nah, it's always been Nico. Like, Nico was that guy last year. Tank Dell was fun, but Nico was that guy who really would change the complexion of those games completely. Uh, Tennessee, one and five, strolls into Detroit, five and one. Now, this has let down game potential here because Detroit has played... The Cowboys in Dallas beat up on them. Huge division game here uh, this past week against Minnesota where they won that one too. They don't have Hutchinson. Again, it's it's trap worthy. 11 and a half is the number. It's huge. 45 and a half is the number plus 475 for the Titans to win, which again, I don't think they're going to. 
But Andrew, do you have any concerns here that Detroit falls into this trap or do they just handle their business, even if they should come out sluggish in the first half? I think just based on the fact that we have a lot of big spreads this week within double digit points, I don't think that everyone is not going to cover them. And if I had to bet on one team covering it, it would be the Lions because they're the best team against the spread basically since Dan Campbell took over. So if there's any team that is going to fight against, hey, we're such heavy favorites, it's going to be Dan Campbell getting his team hyped up again. The Titans were up 10 nothing against the Buffalo Bills on the road and they still got blown out, right? So yeah. and we you, thought it would be better with Mason Rudolph. We were like, oh, I, I mean, it, it started be it started off better and they weren't turning it the ball over as much. But again, the Titans just seem, especially their passing game is just, it's all, nobody seems to be on the pa- same page. Calvin Ridley, every time the ball is thrown to him, he's looking up like, oh, where, where's the ball? Oh, it should be over here. It's over there. It's, it's a mess. So the fact that they also don't have an advantage running the ball, or at least you could see a path with Tony Pollard, they can run against the Bills. I don't think they're going to have as much success running against the Detroit Lions. So yeah, you're you're laying so many points here with the, with half. with the Lions, oh, yeah. but they're playing at home. Um, maybe this is something I would probably look maybe towards the under again if you're looking for it to be underwhelming. But I mean, I'm not going to back the Titans after I did last week. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm not going to back the Dolphins. I don't care if they're at home. I don't care if two is back. I have had it with the Dolphins. They've they're dead to me, and the Arizona Cardinals are right behind them. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Like, this is a game I'm running away from. Dolphins at home, favored by three, which means, obviously, Vegas doesn't want anything to do with this game either. 47.5 is the number, plus 130 for Arizona. The value on this game is Arizona on the money line, plus 130, folks. I know nobody wants to hear it. Uh, I don't want to hear it, but that's where the value is. It's absolutely on them because it'll be a big narrative of, <clears throat> well, look, they're, they're you know, they're getting two back. Everything's going to be fine, and maybe it will be. Maybe it'll be better. Who knows? Arizona is completely inconsistent. I don't know what Arizona Cardinal team shows up tonight on Monday Night Football. I don't know what Arizona team shows up next week. They don't know. So if anything, the value is straight up money line. Again, close your eyes and bet it kind of scenario here because I have, I feel like the Dolphins are fraying at the seams that they can't get anything right. Maybe Tua cures that or some of it. I don't know if he cures all of it, Andrew. I just don't know at this point. I think that he's going to. I really think that think he's it's so that easy. I, I do Ugh. because you just look at the lack of usage of the receivers. I mean, Mike McDaniel, all he has a bye week, right? And he comes out, and who's the leading receiver for this team? Shawnu Smith. Shawnu <laughs> Smith. <laughs> right. That's Shawnu freaking Smith. That's the guy who he's scheming up touches, working the lab overtime to make sure that he gets fed in this matchup where Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. I, I they they during the last game they showed a screen of those guys. Mike McDaniel and them were like chuckling. And they must have been talking about, oh, yeah, we just don't get any targets anymore. Is this just how this offense works? So I actually like betting on the Dolphins right now before we get 100% confirmation. It's Tua expected to play. I mean, isn't this line going to get larger? Okay. So let me let me put it to you this way. If, if it's Tua plays, is it three and a half? Is it four? It's going to be. I think it's more than three. Yeah, because I think that people are just going to bet okay. on the Dolphins. And you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to wait. Set my line alerts and wait for it to get to three and a half, four and a four and a half. Find on betting pros the best line I can. And then I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals. I, with the I would agree. That would be the best way to get the best number with Arizona. <laughs> I mean, right now the early value is, oh, look, actually to that point, if it's going to grow, then chances are the plus money on the money line will grow too. So you can take the plus 130 now just in case two, it doesn't play, right? Just to kind of lock that in and then double down on it. <laughs> just take the points after. I don't know. At this point, like I said, man, I, I think Tua cures some of the ills, but I don't know if he cures all of it. The New York Jets. Travel to New England to play the New England Patriots. Ah, uh, yes. The New England Patriots are seven point home underdogs. 39 and a half is the number, plus 240 on the money line for the Patriots. You know, I'm frustrated because they really played well against the Texans at home. They went to London, did not play their best game. We all know that. Very disappointing. Some injury issues, some illness issues, all this stuff. But, you know, excuses eventually you put them away. But I don't know. I, th- I feel like the Jets are running out of excuses, too. They look eerily similar, if not worse, than the team we saw last year. But this team has Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams and the, doesn't have Robert Sala anymore. But uh, I don't know at what point, like, I know the Jets' defense is really good. I know Drake May's a rookie quarterback. But two weeks ago, the Houston Texans were really good and Drake May was still a rookie. And that game was pretty interesting. I, I don't know if I feel comfortable with the Jets' side of this game, Andrew. Uh, what do you think? I think I probably gonna bet the over. <laughs> I guess that's the way I'm looking at it. Thirty nine and a half. Wow. I mean, it's so low. And Drake May has one less passing touchdown this year than Patrick Mahomes. Drake May. 
he has played two games. He's played two games. <laughs> so I, I think that May is getting this offense going. You might be onto something here. The Patri- you might be onto something The here. Patriots' defense is not good. <laughs> I, I get that they have this mystique where, oh, it's, it's Belichick's old guys. It's Mayo. This defense just got shredded by the Jaguars and the Texans back back weeks. They've given up 300 yards seemingly every single week. And when did the Jets' offense look like it was, it was all the way back? When they faced the New York Jets a couple weeks ago. So the fact that the Jets, again, have these additional pieces— they're feeding Brees Hall. I'm expecting the Jets offense to look good here. And I think Drake May gives the Patriots boost enough on offense what he's able to do aggressively throwing the ball down the field, running with his legs. I think this game goes over the total. So that's how I'm going to approach it. The Jets are two and five, folks. Two and five. There you go. Atlanta Falcons going to Tampa. Again, Tampa will play tonight. We'll see how they come out of this game. So Early value looks right now, minus two and a half at home for Tampa. Uh, I'm on the Atlanta side of this game. 48 and a half is the number, plus 125. I'll take Atlanta straight up on the money line this week so far, unless I see something different that, I mean, really, whatever it comes to, the same thing, which is I like Baker Mayfield as an underdog. I think he plays, shows up for that. I think he gets very, you know, animated, excited. I think when they're the favorites, especially at home, sometimes it's a little underwhelming here. Uh, So I'm going to go on the Falcons side of this game. Do you have any favorite look at this game here when you're first hot taking it through week eight. I don't, I kind of want to watch the Buccaneers play. I wanted to see how healthy Mike Evans is. I know he's been dealing with an injury. That's he's a, a big part too. of that offense. So I'm just going to leave it. Wait and see for Andrew Erickson. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles and Saquon Barkley didn't have to wait very long for Saquon Barkley to look very good. So Saquon Barkley uh, did his thing uh, as we said, he would the revenge narrative was real. We talked about it on last week's show. I said, there's not a lot of revenge narratives. Those things get really overrated. This is not one of those times. And it wasn't. Saquon did his thing. Now, I wanted the multiple touchdowns. I wanted that plus 400 to come in. It did not. So, boo. Wanted touchdowns from Barkley. But that's all right. So, the Eagles take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Another enigma team. Three and four, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. They're minus two and a half favorites against the Eagles. I actually think that's correct. Uh, I still don't trust Sirianni quite a bit. 46 and a half is the number plus 118 on the Eagle side of things here. To me, this is a matter of, you know, if you got to elevate the scoring here in this game, if you're the Bengals, you got to take advantage of what you get. If the Bengals can get over 24 points, I think they win this game. Like that, that's it. Like I, I think at a certain point, the Eagles might cap out a little bit. So I think they're capable of doing this. I'll take Cincinnati with the two and a half. Andrew, what do you think about this one? I like the Bengals as well with the two and a half, but I also like the over. I know that Cincinnati's offense hasn't yeah. looked elite the last two weeks, but the Giants' defense is underrated. Like we saw last week, they're they're an underrated defense. They can generate pressure, and I was kind of expecting a a more of a sluggish type of game from the Bengals last week against the Browns. You know, on the road against the, a divisional opponent. This is a non-conference game, so this is where I think things get kind of wacky. And there's just too much talent on both these. I mean, AJ Brown, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, explosive running backs. I love the overplay here. Uh, over looks pretty good, too. I might put those two things together. A little skinny parlay, a little duo bet there. The New Orleans Saints, or whatever's left of them, are going to travel to Los Angeles <laughs> to play the Chargers here. Again, Chargers will play Monday night. We have the two Monday night games, so four teams involved. Uh, seven and a half right now is the spread on this one with the Chargers on the minus side of it. It's a lot of points for the Chargers, but then again, that New Orleans Saints offense looks pretty despicable right now uh 39 and a half the over under plus 300 for new orleans this is just a matter of health i i think the chargers just kind of grind the saints here with that run game uh grinding with jk dobbins as long as he comes out healthy and maybe a little kamani vidal too since the bye we saw little flashes of him we'll see if we see more of it tonight uh 39 and a half is the number here so andrew any approach here for this game early on under for me i think this is pretty easy under 39 and a half chargers want to run the ball they don't want to throw and that doesn't generate a lot of points. And the Saints, well, they can't tackle. They're they're still trying to tackle Javante Williams. They're still trying to tackle Sean Tucker from two weeks ago, basically, with this defense. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that they are completely overmatched in this matchup. I get that the Chargers are playing on a short week and the Saints have extra rest. So maybe that does get you away from the seven and a half. But I think for me, it's just, just bet the under and move on. Bill's coming off a big week. Three point favorites in Seattle. They're going to travel all the way across the country there. 48 and a half is the number plus 130 on the Seattle money line. Andrew, uh, this one, again, the lines feel pretty good to me. I think I might lean towards the over. I hope the running backs are a little healthier in Buffalo this week. I think that's why you saw so much passing last week. And not so much like the bills have changed their offense completely. I think it was out of necessity. 
Um, and I think it was a matter of, you know, look, Cook is not 100% here. Davis had some issues. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to have to throw the football today. And Amari Cooper did show up. And Keon Coleman, you know, certainly um, maybe, you know, the best game of his season it could be, too. Like, I wouldn't be chasing this game. But what do you think about uh, Buffalo-Seattle? I think I'm probably going to want to fade Seattle in this spot where they're coming back home, coming off a big win on the road against the Falcons. But this is typically, again, if we ask Furman, He's probably going to agree with me and say this is a typical Geno Smith letdown spot where they're playing at home against a ESA Bills team that's been very up and down. But hey, you know, give credit to the Bills. They were down 10 nothing at home and didn't matter. Weren't phased and they got yeah. it done. They got Amari Cooper involved. So when in doubt, they find ways to win. Yeah. I mean, Josh Allen by a field goal. I think that's just a smart bet to make. So, yeah. all right. A few more four o'clock games here, including Washington. Uh, hosting the Chicago Bears. Bears coming off there by Daniels. The good news is there's no break in the rib. So again, we'll have to monitor him. But as the line looks right now, minus one and a half uh, for Washington at home. Practically a pick here. 46 and a half is the number. You get minus 110 on the money line of the Bears. Minus 122 of the Commanders. Now, again, you got to kind of speculate here if you want any early value. If you think Daniels is going to play and you think he's going to be okay by the time you get there, I think you want to jump on the Washington side because Daniels is a very effective quarterback and look i mean i know the carolina panthers are not a good football team but you got to give the commander's defense some respect they have certainly turned things around after a very sluggish start they're not elite but they're improved and then the bears here you know caleb i'm sure has heard a lot about how great Jaden daniels is and all that stuff so there's a motivation there and more time to prep this is a, one of the more intriguing games on the slate i still want to lean towards washington just being hopeful that the Jaden daniels health gets there but uh Wishes and dreams don't always come true, Andrew. Yes, hope isn't a strategy, Joe. So I I'm taking the Bears side here. I, I think yeah. that we're going to – I don't think Jane Daniels is going to play. I know that his mom talked about he's fine, but Joe – do you when you have a great well Italian... if mom says you're fine she's telling you you get your ass out there and you play <laughs> yes but i've also been and you know now that i'm newly married again when my wife says oh this is fine i know that, that that's not fine I, I know that's not exactly what she's telling me what to do so i'm more in depression i'm going to be a little bit more pessimistic about jane daniel's availability remember he is their future he is their franchise mm -hmm. if he is not 120 percent ready to go they're not going to put him out here especially based on how Mar marietta looked solid in his outing in this offense so i think that right now it's just time to back the bears because i think that this line is going to move in their favor and again give credit to caleb williams he's been playing again i know that Jaden daniels nice had the hot up. start but caleb williams has been on fire the last couple back. of weeks so and i think that he can definitely take advantage of this commander's defense so even if Jaden daniels doesn't ends up playing i don't think you're dead in the water i mean i don't think it would be a surprise if the bears won even if Jaden daniels plays so i like backing the bears my only pushback on that andrew is the future is now for the commanders. They're five and two. They can run this. They can win this division. I mean, it is very clear to me that they can compete for this division, especially with the way the defense has improved in the last few weeks. Again, not perfect by any stretch, but definitely better than the first two weeks of the year. So the Carolina Panthers, Andrew, hopefully you successfully yes, stay I, away. I stayed away. I did it, Joe. I did it. Oh, I'm so proud so of proud. myself. <laughs> we'll see if you can keep it two weeks in a row. Keep the streak alive. The Denver Broncos at home. <laughs> Get this, Bo Nix and the Broncos are seven and a half point favorites at home against anyone in the NFL. <laughs> 42 and a half plus 300 on the Panthers money line. Uh, Panthers are dreadful. Uh, I assume we're going to get Bryce Young back too at some point because why not? Uh, I don't know, man. That's a lot of points for the Denver Broncos. I want to say under, but I don't feel comfortable with anything in this game. This is just the dregs for me. I'm going to look at the Bo Nix rushing yard total. That's that's whenever that comes out at probably an over for me. That's where I'm going. Yeah. Don't you and Boggs talk about on the show where, uh, yeah, just bet the props. <laughs> that, that's going to be the strategy in this game. That's uh, the props. Bet, bet the Sometimes props. that happens. Bet, yep, the, bet, the props. bet the props. And you know what? Whenever we say that, it's right. <laughs> whenever you get that feeling in your bones, we're like, oh, <laughs> Look, because there's good process here. The way the Denver Broncos defense played last week, the way the Panthers offense played last week, the way the Panthers defense played, all of this makes sense. This line makes sense, but my confidence level is just not there. Like, I just, I can't get there in the game props of any of these things. I think they're all correct, but I don't feel good about them. Uh, another double digit spread. Stop me if you heard this one before. Last of the four o'clock games, the Las Vegas Raiders are 10 point underdogs at home to the Kansas City Chiefs. 42 and a half is the number plus 380. For Vegas now. Last year, Vegas put a little ass kicking on the Kansas City Chiefs, and I'm pretty sure they remember that at the end of the year. I think they take out their uh, frustration with that here. But 10 is a big number on the road. I don't know if the Chiefs are as explosive. Mahomes 
Look, I know we can make all the jokes about Drake may have more touchdowns, but Mahomes took over that game and did Mahomes things and made plays and had big runs and trucked guys in the end zone. And that dude just puts the team on his back and leads. 10 points is a lot, though, that being said, Andrew. So 42 and a half. I don't know. Where do you want to go with this one? It's too many points for me. So I'm going to take the Raiders. Again, the Mahomes will do what it takes to win but not to win by 10 and a half points. That's, that's the issue with the chiefs. Cause their offense just isn't the same type of explosiveness that, that were no. Yeah. And especially until, I mean, they tried to get worthy going Worthy had some opportunities in that game against the 49ers. They fell just short. So I think eventually it's going to work at some point, but in this particular matchup on the road against a division rival that had them last year in this similar spot. Yeah. I mean, Antonio Pierce, the defense for the Raiders, I mean, the Raiders as bad as they played last week, they were still in it till the end. So I think they can keep things close here. So I'm going to take the, again, process the double digit underdogs playing at home with with 10 points 10 and a half i think that's that's the move you gotta make see the the fear i have is the kansas city defense that's played very well and had a great game yesterday i worry about them actually helping this total you know what i mean like the, the mistake prone quarterback play of the las vegas raiders giving them a chance here to cover this number because you get a pick six, you get a fumble recovery for a touchdown. You get like these moments here to, or we just take away a scoring drive or they, you know, throw in a pick in the end zone, like classic Raiders stuff. I feel like is, is put out here. I don't know. This is another one for me. If I will say this, if Xavier Worthy has one big touchdown in this game, I think they clear it too. Like, I think they were close to that a couple of times. It's just not happened there. He didn't make the big splash play, but they were close. Let's get to Sunday night football. Here you go. <laughs> get ready kids dallas cowboys san francisco 49ers there's no michael irvin no steve young in this game there's none of that stuff no 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 this is not the old rivalry necessarily you're used to so the 49ers are five and a half point favorites at home against the cowboys 47 and a half is the number if this was at home i'd be uh for the dallas cowboys i'd be running to bet the san francisco 49ers in this one but it's in san fran they don't have iuke anymore they don't have christian mccaffrey plus 200 on the cowboy side of the money line andrew I was on a monologue for weeks, months even, talking about how when teams lose the Super Bowl, this is what happens the next year. Do you think people hear me now when it comes to the 49ers, where everything that can kind of go wrong just sort of does? Because that's what it feels like the 49ers are in that time loop. And I think it's really hard to mentally pull yourself out of it. The physical issues aside, the physical injuries, and they are many. I think the mental frustrations, you saw it in the Trent Williams uh, ejection. You saw it in multiple no ones on the sidelines there. The 49ers are struggle bus right now, but they are getting the Cowboys. <laughs> so if there's anything that can help you, maybe it's that. Five and a half feels like too much to me. Upset special of the week, Dallas Cowboys. There you go, Joe. Yeah. There you go, Joe. I mean, right. look, the 49ers, they're going on a bye week in week nine. They're just trying to get to the end. Of the, they're, just, they, they're just trying to see the finish line to the end of the season. Everybody's hurt on their team. Dallas is coming off a bye week. Look, Dallas last year. Again, they came out of the gates at the beginning of the season. They were not good. and They struggled. And what happened after the bye week? They fixed it. Now, is that guaranteed to happen again? No. But if we're ever going to get a better performance from Dallas, it would be in against a defense that is reeling right now, licking its wounds, and against a healthy Dallas Cowboys team, maybe to get Parsons back. Okay, this is great. So I like Dallas here with the, the upset special. Healthy Parsons makes me like that upset special a lot. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready for a Dallas money line, but I'm ready for Dallas with the five and a half last, but certainly not least the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, continue to win games. They're now five and two. Russell Wilson is apparently the greatest quarterback that ever lived, even though all he does is throw 50, 50 balls where the defensive backs have their hands on them as much, if not more than the receivers. So I'm sure that'll work out well over a long period of time. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, anyway, they're three and a half point favorites at home against the giants, which feels right to me. 37 and a half is the number for this one, plus 150. We don't know who the quarterback of the Giants will be this week. Uh, I don't know if it matters at this point. Andrew, any early value in the look ahead for the Giants-Steelers game? I think you just take the Steelers. I think that they're going to continue to roll. They have they have the other team that's on bye in week nine, and then their schedule kind of flips on its head where they have to play all of their AFC North matchups. Yeah, so I, I think that they're going to ride high into their bye week. I think that they get one more week of Russ where he plays really great. Again, I'm not afraid of this Giants defense, so... I think the Steelers continue to roll. And then I think we're going to see a little regression for them in the second half of the season. So stay tuned for week 10 in the preview of fading the Steelers down the road. Ooh, yeah. I look forward to that. <laughs> I'm going to set my line alerts to that. That's what I'm going to set my line alerts to. Don't forget everybody again, betting pros, premium tools, 
30 days for free fp free that's the way to do it um go check them out right now use the tools that you get and follow us too follow us at bettingpros.com slash erickson bettingpros.com slash joe as well subscribe to the channel subscribe wherever you get your podcast and of course drop your comments below what are your favorite values heading in early for week eight we want to hear from you uh thanks for watching and listening to the show today that'll do it for us but the story of the game goes on for andrew erickson i'm joey p we'll see you next time kids happy wagering